Hi guys, it's Pastor Larry. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that seems to be getting bigger and bigger on the news. Dealing with bullies. I think you're going to be surprised at how God would help you deal with bullies. You know, <laughs> Peter, James, and John one time, they were confronted by people who weren't agreeing with Jesus and uh, wasn't doing things right. And they said, Lord, shall we call down fire upon them? Well, sometimes we'd like to call down fire upon those who oppose us. But that's not the way the Lord manages the problems. That's not the way he expects you and I to manage the problem. So let's talk about how to deal with bullies, how to help those who are being bullied. If you've got a child in school being bullied, I want you to listen up because I want to show you what God would do and how he would help you and help your child deal with that bully. Number one, bullies are responding to their pain and their sense of insecurity or their lack of self-esteem. Unfortunately, they're hurting people who are trying to make themselves feel better by making you or whoever they're bullying feel worse. They pick out people that they know they can intimidate and uh, then they just do that very thing. They intimidate people. Now, how do they know you can be intimidated? How do they know your child is intimidatable? Well, when we're intimidatable, we're timid. We're a little shy. We don't stand our ground quite the way uh, the, those who aren't, are not intimidatable do. And uh, we send out a non-spoken message in our life. There's an aura around each and every person, and that aura contains a message, a non-spoken message. You can look at somebody and pretty much tell whether they're friendly or whether they're a foe. You can tell whether they're going to in, 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 in receive you or reject you for whatever the reason. And that's that unspoken message that we put off. Uh, another reason they know you're intimidatable because they tried it once and you backed off, you ran, you got scared, whatever the issue was. And uh, they know you're, you're intimidatable. So what do they do? They lower you, push you down, and therefore helps them build themselves up. The first thing to do with bullies is begin to realize <clears throat> they're hurting people and they're not happy with themselves or their life. And they're going to make your life miserable as well. And so uh, how, do, how do we deal with that intimidatable stuff? Well, let me, let me help you. Um, out muscling a bully doesn't do anything except create more problems. You might be able to think, well, you know, you go to the gym, you lift weights, you know, the bully kicked sand in your face, and uh, you're going to show him a thing or two. Well, if the process is, it might not hurt you to go to the gym and exercise and build a few muscles, but you're not going to outmuscle a bully because that's just going to in increase the problem. A bully has bully friends, and those bully friends will get together, and now you've got to outmuscle two or three. So, what good is that going to do, see? Uh, trying to outmuscle somebody is just going to create a bigger problem. I want you to learn to deal with the reason you're intimidatable. Why are you so timid and why are you so shy? Why are you the fear that's driving you? Where is that coming from? Here's how we do that. We have to ask God to show us what makes us so intimidated. Lord, where is my fear coming from? You ask God to show you where your fear is coming from. He knows what the situation is. Don't go into long, lengthy prayers detailing why you're talking to him and what you need. No, just say, Jesus, would you show me where my fear is coming from? Why is it so easy for people to intimidate me? Why do I run at the drop of a hat? Well, he'll show you a memory. He'll show you some time in your past. It's all right up here in your head. It's, it's not in your head trying to minimize it. I'm telling you, literally, it's in your mind. It's in your subconscious mind. And the Lord will show you a time or something in your past, a situation where you believed that you were small, weak, uh, incapable, trapped, something. He'll show you a memory where you feel these things. And when you see those things, if you would just tell God, Lord Jesus, you're right. In this memory, I feel small. Or I feel uh, overwhelmed or, or I feel helpless, whatever the case is, whatever you're feeling. You look at that memory for a few seconds without thinking, the pain of that memory will tell you exactly what you feel. So look at it and tell Jesus what you feel in that memory. That's a lie you're believing to be true. And lies we believe to be true hold us back in everything. 
lies we believe to be true stop us from moving forward spiritually, emotionally, or any other way. There's a lot of businesses could be started if the person wasn't so fearful and if he would get rid of that reason that he's fearful, boom, he'd have more... Uh, He'd have more self-esteem. He'd have more understanding of how to move forward and to do what God's called him to do. God's truth will always make us free from those things that hold us back. Now, what's going to happen when you deal with that intimidation? The Lord speaks to you, shows you a memory or two. Oh, here's something else. As soon as you deal with one memory, ask the Lord, Lord, is that all there is? Or is there another memory I need to see? Is there something else feeding the same thing? If there is another memory where you believe something that could cause you to be fearful, the Lord will show you the next memory. Just give him a few seconds. He'll show you. Ask him. And then when you look at that memory, again, same routine. Look at it with a quiet mind. Let the pains of that memory speak to you. And when they come, when you understand what you're believing, Tell him what you're feeling. Lord, in this memory, I just feel overwhelmed. In this memory, I feel like it's impossible for me to move forward. I'm helpless. Whatever it is, listen, speak it to him. And then with a quiet mind, wait for him to speak to you. He'll speak right to your mind. He don't speak to your ears. He speaks right to your mind. And when he speaks to you, you speak aloud what he just said. Let's say, for instance, you might have felt small. And, and the Lord would, you'd say, Jesus, I feel small. Then you just wait for a second or two. And he'd say, you're not small. You have me on your side. Well, you speak that out loud. You speak what you sense the Lord saying to you in your mind. It's that still small voice, that real strong conscience, I guess you can call it. But it'll speak right to your mind. You speak it out loud. When you speak it out loud, that changes that memory forever. And that's the button that's being pushed by the bully when he intimidates you. That creates that inner fear, which causes you to run even when he's not even chasing you. Another thing I want you to understand is when you finish, and I just told you, I think, but let me tell you again. When you finish one memory, ask him if there's another because if there's two or three memories causing the same problem, you don't want to deal with one and forget all the rest. So uh, how do we know that we're done in a memory? Well, a memory that's peaceful and healed. A uh, memory that's got all the lives out of it. It's a memory you can look at without thinking for as long as you want to look at it. And all it will be is a quiet picture. Won't be any emotional connection to it at all. You'll just recognize all the players. You'll recognize the scene. But it'll just be a picture. It's like looking at a snapshot. And uh, that's how we know that that memory is peaceful, quiet, and clear. So uh, if, you, if you let Jesus speak to those memories, that's, uh, the, I call them buttons that the bullies are pushing, um, you let Jesus speak truth to it, I guarantee you that he'll change those memories to where now you don't have a button to be pushed. Now, you'll be able to confront that or let that bully confront you. You'll be able to see him or her or them again and you're going to find yourself in a scenario that would have scared you but now you don't have that fear. They don't have that panic. Well, at that moment, you just thank the Lord that he's freed you from it. And I'm telling you, your aura, your unspoken message will change immediately because suddenly you're carrying yourself different. You're, you're standing taller. You feel better about yourself. You're being able to look at people and they don't intimidate you at all. I used to be intimidated by a lot of people. And then the Lord showed me the why, uh, why what was being, the buttons being pushed in my life. I dealt with those. Shoot, I'm not afraid of anybody anymore because I figure when they're tired of hurting, I can help them. See, I can help them. And that's what I tell people who are, who are uh, trying to be ornery with me. I just tell them when you're tired of hurting, you calm down, I can help you. And you, you don't like what you're feeling, I can help you with that. Well, that's what I want you to recognize is God wants you to deal with you. Let this bullying situation help you or your child recognize where those buttons are and then learn to work with God so that he can disconnect those buttons or you'll know the truth, you'll experience the truth from your communication with God and that truth will always make you free. Now, will the bully automatically stop? I don't know. But one thing I do know, if that bully sees you again or sees your child again, they're going to recognize something is different. 
And if you just recognize that bully's dealing with you because he don't like himself very much, then I would just say to that bully, you know, hey, mister, it, it, when you're tired of hurting, I can help you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, shove off. I'm not going to pay any attention. And uh, I guarantee you that bully will back off with a question in his mind like, what in the world caused this to happen? Because, you see, bullies don't like to be confronted. They don't like to be challenged. They like pushovers that don't challenge them at all. So don't let this bully continue to challenge you. Let this bully help you determine where, let God show you where the lies are you're believing to be true, and then speak to him. Allow him to speak to you, and you'll watch your life change. Let's see. Um, that's it. That's it. You can't outmuscle a bully, but you can outsmart them. You can be smarter than them by talking to God and letting God help you deal with the fear and the pains that's in you. And once you do that, you'll automatically change. You'll manically, that's called a, that's called a, um, what's that called? A metamorphosis, an internal restructuring that produces an external change. And the external change will be how you carry yourself, how you, how you look, how you feel, and how you present yourself to other people. So don't let the bully bully you any longer. Go to God with it. Don't try to out muscle him. You're just going to get hurt worse. Go to God. Let God give you truth. Let the truth make you free. And then you'll find yourself non bullyable. Bullies don't like people who don't back away. So God bless you. I hope this has helped you. If it hasn't, comment below. If it has, comment below. I want to know you're there and I want to know I'm helping you. If it's confused you, get a hold of me. Go out to my website, LarryLow.com. Go to connect. Look down at the bottom where it says to uh, email or contact me and send me a message. I want to help you. I don't want to give you something that I just don't want to be another space on YouTube. I want to be a blessing to your life and your family. If you know other people that are struggling this way, pass this video around. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Give me a share. Subscribe to my channel. Um, I, want to, I want to be a blessing to you. LarryLow.com is my website. Go out there. There's plenty of books, plenty of reading material, plenty of free stuff that can help you grow in the areas of your emotional realm and in the areas of your spiritual realm to where you can be all that you know God designs you to be. God didn't design you to run in fear. He says, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So therefore, go out and learn. Let me help you. God bless you, friends. I'll see you next week on the next video. Until then, be blessed.